we're going to make tortoises today. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm going to have to. You can move slowly, but I can't. Or it will. I might get annoying. <laughs> okay, I can't do that for I any can't. longer. I can't either. I was thinking, you know, um, in my research, it says that they live 150 to 200 years. And I was thinking, that is a long time to nail down um, crawling very well. That, that's true. <laughs> like and they, and are gonna... they, they take their time, yeah, too. So yeah. why is... rush when you've got 150 <laughs> years? That is a long life to get, to get walking down pet. So we have um, a tutorial prepared and a supply pack prepared that came about because we shared it as a part of our Fiber Fairy um, giveaway. Normally, this would be a course that we would put in our annex, which is our, our paid um, upper level courses, but we wanted to share it um, for this special giveaway. And so now we're making the tutorial and the supply pack so that everyone can have access to it. So it's a pretty big supply pack because there's a lot of different materials. I would call the, the project a level three to four. It's complex in the amount of materials it takes and it has wet and needle felting. So make sure that you have the tools that you need for both of those things. But it's simple in its um, sculptural sense. So it comes together easily. There's not a lot of complex muscles and details um, it all just sort of is a fun process of wet and needle felting, of course, making the armature as well. Um, and then it just comes together in the end. So it's a really great, really great project. So we do have the supply pack. If you want to sort of get a booster pack, um, the fiber art bundle would be really fun. You don't need the locks in this project, although they could be incorporated, but the fiber art bundles have a variety of mohair silk and um, merino, short staple merino, that are dyed in a really fun, natural way. I, I pulled out the bronze to show you guys, but there's, there's lots of other choices. But everything that you need is going to be in the, in the supply pack in terms of fiber and wires. Uh, we need our needle felting supplies and we need a wet felting setup. The big setup is great, the bigger wet felting kit, because you can lay out everything for the tortoise in one pass. So should, should we get started? Do you have anything you want to add at this point? I, I mean, what Whoops. do you call a famous tortoise? I, I like this one because, you know, uh, I might be a little famous. <laughs> you relate? In, in my mind, yes. <laughs> I don't know what. A celebrity. <laughs> That's a good one. Thanks. Yeah. We're, we're off to a roll. Yeah. We're off to a, we're off like a herd of turtles. Yes. Let's, which is, by the way, is called a creep. They, they don't, they, it, it's a good name. It's a great name. And it made me want to turn on TLC, which I did. You should do that. Yes. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. It's appropriately been a slow setup for the beginnings of our yes, tutorial creeping our way along yeah. so i have a supply pack here and um i have to admit it might change a tiny bit we're using this um this tutorial as our test for the supply pack which sometimes i tweak it will only change for the better yes it will only change for the better is a good way to put it so many fun things in here a bag of neps, some top coat, two bundles of merino, all of your wires, moss core, off-white chunky core, and ivy prefelt and a tan um, house-made prefelt. I'll get to those in a moment, but first let's take a look at these bundles because we're going to want to do a little bit of blending to get going. We need to make some colors. 
There are three colors of silk. Fog or onion? Oh. <laughs> Sage on and, and bark. Onion. onion. And then six colors of merino. I mean, I really just had fun picking these colors out. You can incorporate any other colors. They range from a light tan to a dark gray, really not as much green, but that's kind of the direction I'm going because this is just my interpretation. <laughs> um, but with, with all of these colors, you can swing your shell color either way. So uh, I learned that tortoises that live in warm climates are usually lighter in color because they are trying to reflect the sun. And in colder climates, they're dark because they want to absorb the sun. And this is like just a tortoise interpretation. I'm not following a specific species, um, but you can look online for something that inspires you and gives you, gives you a reference image. Okay, so I have nut, cinnamon, and bark, and I have dune, currant, and ivy. And these are gonna give us a really nice palette from which to create the shells mainly. The other bundle is top coat and it's oregano and do do do. I have it. I have it right here. I'm just having a um, mint julep. Yes, <laughs> there's so many. So with these and some ivy, I can make a green that I'm going to use on the skin, mainly the head and neck. Now, if I want to make it more rich, more brown, I can add some brown. If I want to gray it out, I can add the current and the dune. So I'll show you a couple of variations of that. But I do want to go ahead and blend some color, make a few color piles, and then um, we're going to make the armature and then we can start wet felting. So with the, the skin in mind, the the wet felting that I'm gonna do for, um, for the head and neck, as well as if you'd like to incorporate onto the shell, I'm going to make um, kind of a grayed out green. So I'm gonna take some of my oregano and mint julep and some of my ivy. And it would be fun to get a little bit of silk in here. So to gray it out, maybe I'll do that with my silk actually. I'll take a little bit of sage and a little bit of onion. Oh, sorry, that was loud. And if you don't have hand carters, you can just in your hand, pull some of each fiber. And restack. We do this in a lot of tutorials. So um, like I said, this is a level three or four, so you want to be familiar with um, the fibers and a lot of these techniques. But I do have, oh gosh, that's pretty. I do have hand carters, so I'm gonna load up one of my carters. I got a little heavy on the silk there. And I wanna make probably about three carters full of this green color. Milo, tell us the most amazing fact that I found, that I feel like I saw when I was. The most amazing fact. Yeah, tell us that um, one about Darwin. Oh, it's on, is it on your screen? <laughs> no, let's see if I remember. Okay. Darwin and Steve Irwin. Yes cared for the same tortoise. The exact same tortoise. So in 1835, okay. something about Darwin um, cared for, it got, like donated to him or, to, 
Well, it went into a zoo that Steve Irwin's parents. Okay, yeah. And then ultimately it did end up at a zoo that Steve Irwin's parents owned. or Which is how he yeah. got to care for it. And it didn't die until 2006, which was the same year that Steve Irwin died. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I really like this. It's a little lighter than the other ones that I've made, but I like that I'm doing something a little different this time. If you want to go deeper, you're going to use like oregano, mint julep, and some of the brown, or some of the, um, you could use a little bit of this here. I'll make a different color so you can see it. Actually, I wouldn't put the sage in there if I want it to be deeper. I would just put the current and maybe some onion just to get a little bit of silk in there or a little bit of the chocolate silk. Ooh, Henrietta? That's going to be dark. What was the tortoise's name? That sounds right, Henrietta. Like that's just, that is a connection that mm -hmm. is truly incredible. This is a fun project for mixing color. You're gonna learn, hopefully, a lot about blending colors and what happens with different colors. That turtle was 170. Wow. 171. So they live to be between 150 and 200 years old. Oh, I said that already. Well, for anyone who skips the intro, there it is again. I don't need this to be per, like perfectly blended, but maybe you do, and that's fine. Just take more time to put it together. I'll show you the difference between the two, big difference between those two batches, just depending on which colors you choose. So I'm gonna do one kind of in the middle so that I can use everything that I've made and just have some variation. Where, where does a turtle go when it's raining? Um, I don't know where. Into a shelter. <laughs> it's like shell. It's like my brain can't can't do two things at once. So they have two skeletal systems. They have a, a spine, like a skeleton inside, and then they have their exoskeleton. And the shell is actually um, several bones, fused bones, and they have nerve endings so they can feel. What? Yeah. If something touches their shell. Ooh, this is pretty one. It says they have over 60 fused bones in their shell. Wow. Okay. Oh my gosh, so much fun. Here's my three floofs. So cool. Okay, I'm gonna set those aside for now. Then, I want to make, you can use the colors straight for your, for your shell. Um, but I think I'd like to blend a few colors together just to have a few options for my shell. So I have this mess that was left over. I'm going to use this and maybe some browns. This is mainly sage and ivy and onion. Oh, and you can see like how different this one was sort of dapples. I think I... That I made this a while ago, but I think I cut the fiber 
and just let it fall on there. And this one is more, I made sections and, um, you know, did a ring of two different colors on the shell. So there's just, there's so many ways to go. When we had the tortoise class, it was really fun to see. Everybody just went nuts making their, making their shells. It was cool to see. Speaking of nuts, I'm gonna use some nut. So maybe this will be my edge. This is gonna be a bit of a lighter color. I'll put some dune on there. Is this dune or amber? <laughs> oh, wait, I have it. I have it. Amber, it's amber. My bad. Dune is maybe a little darker. Yes. Little tanner, warmer. So I'm gonna make a little shell pile of my hand carded stuff. Make one more color, make a dark color. That's really nice and neutral. So All much right. more interesting than just using the colors. Yeah, straight. I think so too. And then I still can do that, but we're going to have a nice variety going on. I'll do current, which will um, gray and deepen the color a little bit and bark. Bark and chocolate are really similar. Um, bark chocolate. And I think um, I do want a little bit of silk in here so that when I wet felt it, it does fun things. So I'll use some of my onion. Use a little bit of onion and a little bit of chocolate. Turtles travel 0.2 miles an hour. Very, very slow. <laughs> but it says they somehow travel up to four miles every day. They just keep on going. Just keep on going. Little workout tip. It's okay if you're slow. Keep at it. <laughs> what is my... I have like a... Some sort of <laughs> carding. <sighs> just can't get that side. We always say this, um, but I recommend watching the tutorial. <laughs> that way you understand what these colors are for, how they're gonna be used you know, as we go through the process, and then you'll know what you're making and why and what you're, you know, it might affect your decisions of what colors you mix together. That's pretty. I love purple and brown together. So you're sort of restacking and mixing a little more. All I'm restacking and mixing a little more because I'm I'm not the best hand carter. So I have two two piles for my shell. And I might add more, but I just while I'm sitting here and I'm comfortable and there's a lot of fiber around, I wanted to show some of the blending. Next, um, we're going to make the armature. Okay, I have my notes here. We're gonna make the armature. I have an armature. It's, this, is a, this is an older one. Their heads are actually um, separate from their body. And- um, Not in yeah. real life. Not in real life. So they, um, that's, <laughs> that's what you're making. <laughs> um, it just works well this way in terms of putting everything together. I have four 26 gauge wires and they may be a different color than this. These are going to go on the legs and also become the toes. I have one 22 gauge wire and this is going to go on the head and neck. I'll show you that. A couple of chenille stems just to go around the body so that it's not slippery. And five wires, I think, it's a lot. So just take your time. Your wires will be rolled up, but in a loose way that you can 
um, get them unrolled. So one is really long. It's going to make the body and, um, and a leg. And then, so it's 30 inches. One is 16, um, one is 18 and three are 16. So make sure you have your 16 inch ones set aside to start and you have your, your 30 and your 18 inch ready to go. The 30 inch makes the body circle. So I'm gonna find the center of the wire just so that I make sure that I have everything even. And I'm not gonna give it a super tough, tight squeeze. I just wanna give it a little bit of a squeeze so that I always know where the center is. And then you kind of make like a fish shape and you want that to be about three and a half inches wide and about six and a half long. And you want it to be the same on each side. So um, a good way to figure that is to measure the remaining wire. That one's seven inches and that one is seven inches. So um, three and a half wide and six and a half long. I can give it a little bit of squeeze here, just a little bit. So about like that. And then instead of twisting this shape closed, you wanna take one of the wires and go through the center of the circle one way, and then take the other wire and go through the center of the circle the other way. So we've closed it by wrapping the wire around the circle. And then we can kind of get that bump out as well. So we want to end up with an, with an oval. The 18 inch is going to be the head and neck. So we'll go ahead and do that and then return to our, our body. So I'm going to fold the 18 inch in half, give it a good squeeze. Thank you, Milo. This I do want to give a nice tight point to. It's going to be the tip of their nose and it's kind of pointy, which is fun. And then I, I found it worked best to make the head into a triangle shape. I'm sorry, a diamond shape. And you want the diamond to be about an inch and three quarters long. And I've got it about an inch wide. So you just go out, go out about an inch and give it a fold and then bring these two wires together until this whole thing is about an inch and three quarters to two inches long. Then we're gonna twist gently, about quarter inch twists all the way down. And then I like to give this a little bend where your two outer points are. I found it helped getting the head shape if you bent the front half of the head down. It's probably easier to do with pliers. <gasps> Don't cut. Oh my gosh. I didn't cut it. I almost <laughs> cut it. <laughs> I'm trying to show like how that's, how that's been. Okay, let's go ahead and put our uh, 22 gauge on there. I do this a little differently than normal because I'm gonna accentuate the tip of the nose by making a strong fold in the center of my wire. I'll show you on this one that's finished. So that becomes even a stronger, a stronger point to the nose. And then each side wraps around back down. So I'll show you on here. Let that stick off another quarter, like eighth to quarter of an inch. And then it's good to go around the head a little bit, like into and around thread through. on 
each side. Sometimes to treat the wire like a ribbon or else it gets it gets jumbled up too. I try to keep it from twisting. So I think I've made, I might have only made these two. Maybe there was another one. There might have been another one in there somewhere because I've been making them for a long time, but never had had the had it filmed. And then these, you want to go the same direction as the twist so that the two wires just fall into the same twist as the as the 14 gauge. That's that. All right, back to our skeleton. All of the remaining three wires are 16 inches. So one is going to go on the, um, let me find the center. It's always a good idea to find the center on the hind legs as a reinforcement. And I want to wrap in the same way. Wait a minute, that's not the same way. You took one in and one out, I think when you. Ruh, ruh. No, it's all, it should all be, I have to go this way. Here we go. Okay, I went around two times on that side, and I'm gonna go around two times on this side. There we go. So the point being <laughs> that all of the wires are twisted in together and married together. They're not crisscrossing. They're like a rope, they're like a cable. And then when I get here, I'm going to twist the two leg wires together and I twist in the direction that I wrap so that when I start putting the wool on, it's also integrating into the cables. And I want to twist, I wrote it down. Well, let's twist four inches, to three and a half inches to start. That's good, I went four. We'll see where we are in a second. It's not necessarily a hard armature to make, but it's complex. It's yeah, it's a lot of pieces. Okay, and then these two are going to go on the on the front legs. So I think it's best to do one at a time. So I like to hook it over, and then take one one way and the other the other way. And that way they're actually going in the same way. And then do the second one. I gotta think here, okay, I think this way. And then go one. Two. Some of us get very turned around by this stuff. <laughs> Some of us being me. <laughs> and then one, two. Yeah. So on one side, your two wires are coming on the top and on the other side, they're coming from the bottom, but they're all going in the same direction. What do you call a turtle chef? <laughs> I don't know what. A slow cooker. <laughs> so now let's just check our measurements here. This is four and a half and that's five. So four and a half wide and five long. 
somewhere in there is fine. I actually have written down in my notes four and a half by five and a half, but with all of this twisting, you know, there might be some variation. Now at the end of each foot, we need to make a, um, a triangle on which to thread our toes with our 22 gauge wire. So first let's make some bends. Um, they do a little weird knee thing. So I go an inch and a half and bend it back. Um, I'm not making an elbow. It's probably in there somewhere, but it's probably back in here. And then, um, and then go two inches. So that's an inch and a half and then go two inches and make a forward bend. And this, all of this remaining wire will become the foot triangle. So we have, we have some extra, but I'm going to leave it there for now. So tortoises have in proportion to their bodies, thicker, bigger legs mm -hmm. because they do so much walking. <laughs> and all tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. And so on the hind, it's actually the same, uh, the same two treatments, a knee at one and a half and an ankle at two and a half. I mean at two. So there's our little dude. Ah, the toes. Can I avoid the toes for another couple of minutes? We're going to put um, chenille stem around the body here so that when we wrap, the first one I'm centering on the front half, and then the second one I'll make a little tail with it. So this way, when we wrap this skeleton, I've got something to grab into. So we want to make two and a half inch tail. So find the center of your second pipe cleaner. Give it a little twist at two and a half inches and then wrap that one on. So your tortoise already has a butt, a back and a front. <laughs> All right, that's it. I can't avoid the feet any longer. We have it's four. Only, it's only 16 toes. I don't know what you're whining wires. about. And you want to make a one inch triangle. So I think there's a couple of ways to do this. You could cut one of the wires at one inch and then use the other wire to go around. I think that's the best way. And then go out an inch, make your triangle, and then you want to cut this so that it doesn't double up on the ang on the ankle and fold that back. So one wire is making the entire triangle and the other wire is cut just to nestle into um, just to nestle into the foot there. What I try to avoid is wires coming back up the leg or poking out the back or poking out the front. You want everything once it's wrapped with wool to be, you know, secured together. You just cut without even measuring. Yeah. Your eyes are like a laser measurer. <laughs> I really like it when I go to Home Depot and whoever's helping me is like, oh, that's not going to fit in your car. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, it is. And then it does. Thank goodness I have this tail. <laughs> 
wouldn't know where I was going. I almost did just cut his face off, though. That was... I was trying to use the whole plier. It does help to leave your foot open a little bit for the wrapping, but we'll get to that in a second. Don't feel like you have to eyeball the cut. Yeah, okay. Some All of right. us. No, okay. you can. <laughs> Measure. I'm just talking to the people out there. Yeah. And actually, Some you want to... Some of wanna, us use, use a ruler. Yeah, you want to cut the first one a little shorter than an inch so that it sits inside of the... It's so, so much more is happening uh, around this foot. You can see how big and bulky they are. I mean, we actually even add a pillow so that you don't see any shape to the foot. So really... It's going to get covered. Yeah, it's going to get, it's going to get covered. So each wire. Did you say that's 22 or 26? Uh, 26. 26. You can come down the leg and that helps make our leg, um, you know, not slippery come out to the edge of a of a triangle and then okay so the third step on the digit widget is three quarters of an inch so if you use the digit widget you can place it against the front um, angle of the triangle and go around on the third step four times. Actually, I think it would be good in this case to go around the digit widget and then go around the wire and then go around the digit widget and then just the wire. That way your toes are getting a little bit of separation between them and definitive security to the um, to the foot, so each toe. That is so much easier than trying to measure. I think so too. It's a good tool. And then we want to bring the triangle closed, and then bring this wire back around everything, going in the same direction as always. As the original twists. So I'll show that one more time. Oh, this one that I'm not going to show on that foot because I bent the wire the wrong way. I'm going to start the wire at the top of the leg, come down, go out, just kind of ignoring this little wire here. Okay, now we're ready for our digit widget. So, whoops, that's the fourth step. So go around the digit widget. The first time around is kind of like helping to hold it. You know what I need to do? I need to go around this one more time to get it really in that corner. There we go. The, the first time around, is a little awkward because you're getting the tool to stay put. Okay, and then around just the wire and then around the digit widget, around the wire. Whoopsie, there we go. And then you can slide it out. And give each toe a pinch. Closed, I don't twist them. I feel like it just kind of makes bulk and then pinch your foot closed and take your wire up. Okie dokie. Okay, so we have our armature finished. The head and neck are very simple. We have our, um, our 
body and legs and toes, which is a little more complicated. And we're going to do some wrapping. So I will heat up some swax. Um, and I usually start with the toes, but I'm going to start since there's just so much uh, to do. I'm going to start with the body and legs. And I'm actually going to start with some off-white chunky core. I can use the off-white chunky core in the body and then switch to the moss when I get to the when I get to the head and legs. We're ready to wrap. Let's see. I, I usually like to work with about eight or nine inch pieces. This is a little on the thinner side for the um, chunky core, so I'm going to split it in two, but you might do better to split it into four pieces. And the first thing I want to do is just go around the circle of the, of the body, get some wool on here. So I'm wrapping. If you want to secure an end, just wrap in the same place for a couple of wraps and then start moving. Tighter and smoother I can get this, uh, the better. I won't, I, I, I won't stab this at all. I'm just going to just going to wrap tightly. What else did we learn about uh, tortoises, Milo? It's a lot of words I didn't know about. Yeah, a lot of... Uh... Carapace is the shell, right? Yes, scutes. Scutes are the little kind of like rings on a tree, like the they're the little sections of the shell. Um, we were I said rings on a tree because it, I felt like it had yeah. something to do with age. It does. It says you can see growth rings around them. Wow. They're made of um, keratin, like our fingernails. Okay. So what's on their legs? Scales? Uh, I don't think they're scales. Is it scales? I think it's just bumpy. Skin? <laughs> bumpy skin? Bumpy skin. I don't think it's scales like, like fish scales. I don't know. I don't have a picture in front of me. All right, so I made it all of the way around with two pieces. You might need a little bit more, but that's what you want to do is get all of the way around. I'm going to get my moss out too, so I can get the tail. You definitely want to get that in green. Let's see, I'll take about a, about a four inch piece, split it in half lengthwise, and then give it a gentle stretch. I'm going to start at the base and go out and in. If you want to, you can hit the uh, body wire there and then start. So they extract even the smallest amount of food and water from every bite. Okay. They're very efficient. Yes. It says they have a hind gut system, which I have also never heard of, with a double di digestive tract. Okay. And it separates water from their waste. Nice. <laughs> Why don't we have a hind gut system? <laughs> Tortoises are more vegetarian than turtles. Turtles will include more animals in their diet. Like insects? Yeah, um, what else are they sea doing? life, small toads, like, oh. yeah. Box turtles are turtles, even though they look kind of more like tortoises. Okay. And they dwell on land more. Turtles generally have sleeker shells and are either very near water or live in the water. And tortoises have a more rounded shell and are land dwellers. Okay, so I want to crisscross 
and fill this whole circle. Well, let me do this. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna get a layer on each, on each leg. So I'm gonna take two six inch lengths of moss and split them in half. And that gives me my four pieces for each leg. And just a very simple, um, I'm gonna go around the body just to anchor it, but just down each, down each leg. You don't have to be super skinny here, but you do need to be neat and tight so that, um, so that you don't have loose fiber that you're trying to work onto. At the bottom, hmm, I'll go around the foot, but then I think I'll go back up because I want, uh, I want to leave this somewhat nude so that when I put the toes on, it doesn't get too, well, it doesn't really matter how bulky it gets, but that's what I'm doing. Their, their legs are logs. Yeah, their legs are logs. The front legs are heavily armored with scales. Okay. Tortoises. Tortoises. Okay. Yeah, I had a similar difficulty with that. Yeah. Turtles have web feet. Yes. But not tortoises. Right. That makes sense. I've spent my whole life thinking tortoises and turtles were basically interchangeable. Oh, I mean, like, mostly. I mean, they are, but they're pretty different. They're all part of the family. Tunis and I <laughs> forget what it's called. It is a, it was a very good, very close. <laughs> Testudinidae. <laughs> Maybe still just <laughs> yes. Oh. Mm. Wrapping legs. So do you think there's someone who knows like all the kingdom phylum class order suborder? That would be a very impressive person. I mean, That's maybe a lot. Not all, but like even of a couple animals. Yeah, I'm sure. Sure, there are biologists who know all that. That's a lot of words. Whoops. The um, there's and the same with plants. Mm. Like, you know, we have like the common names, but then there's the scientific name. What would your scientific name be? <laughs> Mylodophilus. <laughs> Fibrous. <laughs> Dogalus. <laughs> of the order <laughs> comedian <laughs> comedian <laughs> all righty now i want to zigzag in this whole oval so i'm going to take a rather long piece let's say 24 inches split it in half again if your off-white chunky core is way chunkier than this you can split it in thirds or quarters. Um, but this is what my piece looks like. And I, you know, I've only done this three times. <laughs> so there's not a super um, specific system. You can go around, you could just go around, but just make sure that you don't squeeze the wires closed. I so remember doing kind of a keep bass like a weaver. yeah I th yeah we might have done but I think this will work it might feel like it needs a little more felting doing it this way I think the punch tool would be super duper I'm going to concentrate along the wire to get this wrap Thank you so much. Um, stuck to the wire. 
So make sure that I'm missing the wire, but hooking the wool into the wool on the wire. You have a good memory to remember that. I've only made a handful of things. In a class, especially. Yeah. That was a fun, that was mm -hmm. a fun group. I wonder if we could put, um, Audrey, I have pictures from that workshop. And people made a lot of different kinds of um, shells. If we can, like, have a little slideshow somewhere. All right, maybe I'll go this way with one, two. Thank you. Let's go around here. What do you call a turtle that's only awake at night? Knock turtle. Yes. That was impressive. <laughs> what do you call a turtle who takes up photography? Um... I don't know. A snapping turtle. Oh, <laughs> that, well, that was a stretch. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a snapshot joke there somewhere. Right. I mean, really, you're usually shooting. I guess snapping is another way to describe it. I would like to have a, um, what's it called again? Polaroid. Oh, yeah. They have the little Instamax. Okay. A mini. Spend some time felting this together. More time than you're going to see me take here. All right, we need to get these toes going. Oh, this is so fun. I'm gonna use off-white chunky core. Haven't decided yet whether or not the supply pack will have oats. Either way, um, your the Swax really gives the nails a lot of look and um, texture. You could blend a color. I've seen a lot of different pictures. Some of them have dark nails, you know, gray. Um, but I'm just going to use, I'm going to use the off-white chunky core. And I want just small, sort of little thin strips, two to three inches. And I usually go... usually go around the foot to get started and then depending on the feel of things pick a toe and go out and these can be a, um, kind of on the not huge but they don't have to be teeny tiny and but you do want them tight and smooth And I'm going to tack that a little bit because I wasn't able to. Sometimes with my wrap, I'm able to really secure. 
my ends down and sometimes I need to tack it a little bit. Maybe closer to three inch pieces is better. Two is a little, little lean maybe. You like the maybes when I'm teaching you a tutorial? It's all right, you didn't pay for it. Yeah, three's better. It just gives you, gives you more, gives you a nice little bit bulkier toe and then more fiber to uh, return to the foot. If you have not done toes before, <laughs> you want a rather thin piece, nothing more than half an inch. When you compress it, it'll be about a quarter of an inch. And then you're gonna go out and back and you're always controlling the tension and the width of this roving. And every time I go around, I tighten it down. And when I get to the end, I go around, but then you turn right around so that if you linger here, fibers start slipping off, off the end. Or if you let your ribbon get too wide, you can't control, you can't target where you need it to go. So I keep the ribbon nice and narrow, and then I can control where it goes. And out and back really secures the lockdown of the wrap. You do make it look easy. <laughs> it's tedious, no matter how much you've done it. So each foot is getting its four toes wrapped. And then it's going to get, we had four, let's do two eight inch pieces and divide those in half of moss. And so each leg is going to get another wrap now that the toes are, are wrapped. And this time I can go all of the way around the foot. And that's what we want to do on each of the four legs. I'll show you the swax process. Okay, I have my color shaper. It's a silicone applicator for, for the swax. And I just pick up some warm swax and tap it on the top. Tap it on the bottom. And then give it a couple of seconds. I've got a little bunny butter here. Bunny butter, gnome butter, something to make your fingers a little bit slippery. And then once it's cooled for a few seconds, you use your fingers to press it in. You wanna give it that time because if you don't give it a few seconds, 
um, it'll stick to your fingers. But because it's just starting to cool, then your fingers can really press it in. And I'll probably do uh, two coats on each, on each nail. I can do two at one time since it needs time to cool anyway. The, the trick with Swax is build up layers. Don't, you know, if you have a little bit less than you need um, the first go round, then you can always add a little bit more. But if you put too much, it might get bumpy or bulky. But if you put just a little bit, it'll press into the fiber. And Swax has a slight um, cream colored finish to it. Kind of, it's cool. It kind of end, ends up looking like bone colored. But I think I will put oats in the kit, so in the supply pack. So if, um, look for that. It'll be a little more tan when it's done. Yeah, it'll be, um, this one was, that one was made with oats. We have oats on the other feet. <laughs> and uh, each leg now has the two, two layers of moss on it. So that is where we are with our turtle body. You got half a turtle there. I know, I wanna wrap the head. I'm gonna use the moss Ooh. and I'm gonna use about nine inch pieces split in half. Let's do one on the head here. On the head, because it's a little bit of a diamond shape, we can crisscross using the diamond. So I'll go around the neck to get it going and then I'm gonna go from one facet across to the other, then I can come around and go across to the other. So I'm making an X over the head. I'm gonna go around the nose one time. So this time, instead of coming right here, I'm gonna go around the nose and get that wrapped and then go there. Just keep Xing until it's all encompassed. Get one nose wrap in there. So that was one half of a nine inch piece. And with the other half, I'm gonna go down the neck. I want to get it all covered because this needs to slide in and out of the shell cavity that we create. So we don't want any pokey wires. And then I'm going to do the whole thing again. Might not have to do quite as much on the head. I'm gonna turn the nose down a little bit. And this time, instead of crisscrossing on the four facets, I'm gonna crisscross to the front of the nose and then to the back of the head. So the crisscross will all be underneath here. So I'm gonna go around the front of the nose and then around to the back of the head. And that's gonna to start to fill in the bottom of the head. So I'm crossing underneath I'm going around the front of the nose and then around the back of the head. And then I'll just go around the whole thing. 
we do that in um, kind of like in basket bunnies, chicks. That movement starts to fill in some space in the underneath the curve. And then I'll go down the neck again. That's a weird looking piece. I know. <laughs> And I'll put, I want to put one more on the neck. And I think I might even leave the piece whole just to get it nice and filled out. So I'm going to take another nine inch piece. I'm going to leave it whole. Just give it a stretch. I'll try going the other way. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you go bottom up or top down. Just some stabbing down the sides. Avoiding the wire keeps everything in place. All right, it's a good start. Time to wet felt.